Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are talking about UFC's dark horses in each division. Now, this is a video that I actually uh, that I got an idea from a live stream I did a couple days ago. I kind of did my quick thoughts on there. Someone asked it in the live chat again. I, I don't stream as much as I want to, just work, you know, family, a lot of that stuff. But Again, when I do stream, make sure the bell notification or notification bell is turned on so you guys get the notifications when I go live because we talk about a bunch of stuff. It's it's pretty fun, I personally think. If you don't like it, that's fair. If you're here just for the shorts, just for the videos, I appreciate guys appreciate your guys' support with this stupid ass rambling that I'm doing. Again, let's jump right into it. First, absolute uh, uh dark horse absolutely for me is the flyaway division and that is high end sung park nine and oh now, again flyaway division he's only 28 years old the reason why he is the dark horse that he's a dark horse to me personally and for one again he's 28 years old hasn't fought you know but twice in the ufc it's just the way he's able to make these fighters look. It's the way he's able to, how fluid he looks. Of course, there's always room for improvement. There's nothing been perfect about anything, but it's it's his age. It's just how he fights. It's just the defense that he has. You're going to go far in flyway when you have, like you're not great in one area. He has pretty good striking, really good grappling. It's just there's so much if he's like at the top of his game, because we haven't seen that yet, I, I don't think. I'm like, well, there's so much room in the in the division that really needs that breakout star. So I really, really like Hung Sung Park a lot at 9-0, and and he is my dark horse for flyweight division. Next, personally, has to be Montel Jackson. You know, and at 14 and 2, this guy is so underrated. I know he has two losses. I know he's 32 years old. Somebody has to start paying this man respects or some some respect. At nine finishes, eight and two in the UFC, both by decisions, both by very, very good fighters. The Ricky Simone one right now doesn't look good, and that's only because of the fact that Ricky Simone right now hasn't been looking very good. Back then, he was 13-1. He was kind of on his way up. You know, and then he lost a bit against Brett Johns. Brett Johns is a very good fighter. Happens not to be in the UFC anymore. Was good in the UFC. Not great. Didn't live up to the potential that we thought he could. Still a good fighter. And he's fought some pretty decent guys. Jesse Strada, not great. Destroyed him. JP Baez was the weird one because he hurt him a bunch of times. But the good thing that I really like about Montel Jackson is that he doesn't rush he doesn't rush to try to get the finish. If the finish is there, which there was tons of finish opportunity for him in the JP buys one, but he also went 15, 15 minutes, three rounds, looked great, his cardio looked good, and it showed us that the power carries. Yes, I understand the JP buys one is weird because JP buys is bad. He gets hurt, he gets finished all the time. I agree, I agree, but you know, then he goes to fight Julio Arce, and that's a good one because Julio Arce has only been finished by Song. I believe Song Yadong finished him. I think caught him with a head kick. I think that's what that one was. And then he absolutely mauled Hani Yaya. Again, Hani Yaya is old, old and really bad. Here's where we're like, okay, all right, this is it. Damon Blackshear, good fighter, good detect uh, defensively sound. Flatline them in 18 seconds. Short notice. Sorry, I hit my mic. That was a weird noise. I really like Montel Jackson. I think Montel Jackson is absolutely the dark horse. He's only ranked 17. 17. Should be higher. It's a travesty. Montel Jackson, you are my absolute bantamweight dark horse. Next, again, is a really... Uh, People aren't going to like this. People aren't going to like this. I know, I know people are on the Peyton Talbot train at 9-0, also for bantamweight. So was, yeah, so was Montel Jackson. That's why I put him up here. Um, yeah, 
I understand he's only 25 years old. He's on a 14 5 uh, win streak, nine of them pro. Uh, you know, the other ones are amateur. I get it. I get it. Some of your guys' dark horse is going to be Peyton Talbot. I just don't think the level of competition is the same. Eight finishes out of his nine wins. I get it. I, I really do. He's 3 0 in the UFC. I mean, come on. Come on. Montel Jackson has seven more fights than him. I'm a big fan of Peyton Talbot. This is not a diss on Peyton Talbot. I just can't say he's the dark horse of that division. Uh, you know, I just think Montel at 17 can really boost his way. If he gets another big win against a ranked guy, depending on how, how it is with that division with Bantamweight, we're talking about him being in a title eliminator. Peyton Talbot still has a long ways to go to get there. He's what, ranked 30? 38. And Adrian Yanez, who the guy he called out after his last very quick knockout win, Adrian Yanez isn't that much higher. You know, I think he's. Where, where's Adrian Yanez? Yanez. Uh, da, 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 da. Adrian Yanez is 22. Okay, so he's 16 spots higher. All right, fair point. Um, but yeah, but I like Payne Talbot. It's a toss up for, for uh, uh, perception. For me, it has to be Montel Jackson. Right behind him is Peyton Talbot. Absolutely. Again, this is not me saying, you know, he's not good or anything like that. He's just he's 25 years old. I do want to see a little bit more. He hasn't fought anybody really that good. I do want to see more. Destroying Cameron Seaman, I'll say right now, is that, that's, that's a fucking step. I'll give you that for sure. But Montel Jackson is my dark horse. Absolutely. And next... This is probably going to shock some people for the featherweight division. And my featherweight division uh, dark horse has to be Yusuf Zalal. I mean, he's 27. He'll be 28 in September here in two days. 15-5-1, and 5-5 five, five winning streak. He's fought some really, really good fighters. 5-3-1 and one in the UFC. The one draw was against Simon Blackshear, a fight I did personally think he won. Left the UFC, got cut from the UFC. Only three the losses are three uh, decisions. He's never been finished. 12 finishes out of his 15 wins. De uh, destroyed Jarnell Aarons. Had struggled on the feet a tidbit if you if you watch that fight. Picking his moments, doing all these things, staying safe. Got the takedown. Or gets his back, gets the naked choke. Mauls Billy Q. Somebody that I don't believe was finished or submitted at that point. You know, and then again, had some kickboxing experience, some boxing, some kickboxing. And his three losses, Ilya Teporia, Sung Hu Choi, who at the time was on a run, not so good now. And Sean Woodson, not a bad loss because Sean Woodson right now is on the up. I mean, that's the reality. You know, maybe he didn't really beat anybody great. Also, one of his first loss was Chepe Marsco, who's also very, very good. I just really like the experience of Zalal. And the big thing for me with Yusuf Zalal is just the way he fights. It's a little bit safer of a style, but he's, he has good striking. He has, he's very good defensively, and he has very, very good grappling. He's very heavy on top, it seems. When he, when he, when he is fighting these fighters, it seems when he's able to get these guys in certain positions, like their backs... He seems pretty damn strong. So, again, featherweight, dark horse has to be Yusuf Zalal. You know, next, uh, I was I was a little bit of a doubter for this fighter right here. Uh, I just had some questions, and he answered all of them. Next one, Yoel, or Joel Alvarez. Yoel, I'm so used to Yoel, but Joel Alvarez, 31 years old, two-fight win streak. He's 21-3. Lightweight, absolute dark horse for that division. I'm a big fan of Elvis Briner. I, I I I think he, even on a very bad weight cut, as we've seen with uh, Elvis Briner against Orobai, which a lot of people are gonna think Orobai was gonna do that anyways. Orobai was kind of exposed a little bit in that fight. You're able to get certain positions you don't want to continue giving up. Briner just didn't have it to do what he was able to do before that. This was a guy that was on a crazy win streak beforehand. So Joel Alvarez went out there, was the first guy to finish him, hurt him with a big, a big I believe, a big left hook, counter hook, as Elvis Brenner uh, was blitzing him and then was able to finish him. To, uh, what is that? Jesus, 21 finishes. Obviously, he's never been to a decision before. That he won. He did you know, have a loss right here by decision, which I believe... 
Oh, I guess it wasn't. It was Demir Ismagulov. Well, yeah, again, it was it was in the UFC. So, yeah. Um, and again, if you look at it, he's gotten better, gotten better. Armin destroyed, absolutely destroyed him. And he was still getting taken down a ton in the Mark DeCasey fight. Still. They were talking about it on the commentary team. And then he came, he was supposed to fight Ludovic Klein, which that's a tough fight. Matthias Rebecca before the uh, Diego Carlos Vieira fight, which people still criticize. Weird. Elvis Brenner, again, before that, was on a big, uh, big win streak. And he absolutely showed out. Showed that his takedown defense is better, at least in that fight. It was against a guy that is very, very dangerous. Joel Alvarez absolutely is the lightweight dark horse for me. And he's he's ranked 18th. 18th. And I still don't hear a ton of people talking about him. Now, there is some fights that I am curious to see how he would do in. Of course, Charles Oliveira. I think Dan Hooker would be a Pro it, it, Joel Alves would be a problem from, for Hooker because Joel is very accurate. Again, his takedown defense, if it becomes an issue, I don't think Dan's going to expose that. He did call out Bobby Green afterwards. I absolutely love that fight because it's going to be fireworks and it's a big name on his resume. I mean, as if Elvis Brenner, if you know, you know him. He's, he's a decent fighter. So that's, that's a name there. But Bobby Green, that would be, sorry, King. Not going to call you King, Bobby. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Joel Alvarez, I, I think, at, beats up Bobby Green. I'd love to see the fight because I can never really count out Bobby. I wouldn't be surprised if Bobby somehow made it some this crazy fight. This is the same guy that fought Rafael Vasiv before Vasiv started, uh, lost the Gagey fight before he got hurt against Gamrai, and Bobby Green arguably won that fight. Personally, I thought Bobby won the first round and the third round. Absolutely tuned him up in the third round, but Joel Alvarez called him out. I'm interested to see where they put him. Next, after that, after that Elvis Brenner fight and him calling out Bobby Green. Very, very good finisher. 17 finishes, prob submissions. Bobby hadn't been finished before the Patty fight. I wish he didn't go out cold because I think it's an automatic 60-day suspension. If he would have tapped, he could have jumped right back in there. But again, a couple months, you know, one or two more months, expect probably that uh, matchup to be announced. That is my dark horse for the lightweight division is Joel Alvarez. Next, I know there's going to be some people, but they actually moved the other fighter that I was going to pick into the rankings. Sure, fair, I guess. But has to be Carlos Pradas. Michael Morales has now moved up into that. Uh, I think he's 11 in the rankings now. So he's not my dark horse. I know he's younger. I get it. Fine. Just to me personally, it went over the leech is much bigger than Neil Magny. The leech at one point was very, very highly ranked. I don't think Neil Magny was ever high, that high ranked. Maybe he was at some point, maybe. But again, I, I just really like Carlos Paredes. And again, he destroyed the leech. Not a close second in that fight. 18 finishes, has been finished five times in his career. It's been a while since he was finished. It was all the way back. Let me see. It was all the way back in 26. Or no, sorry. 2017. He was finished by Makhil Rumichuk. It was a long time ago. No, is it really? Yeah. But yeah. Anyways. Yeah, I I, I just really like Trevin Giles was, that, was doing work against him. Yes. And then he flatlined him. Destroyed Charles Radke. Why there was so much hype on Radke. I'll never understand. I can't believe he's even in the, U in the UFC still after what he said after Blood Diamond. Also, went to a decision with Blood Diamond. Wrap that, wrapped your head around that one. And then he absolutely mauled the leech. Face plants at him. It was a beautiful thing to watch. Sad, but beautiful for Carlos Paredes. This is the guy that is absolutely the dark horse in this division. And number 18, when Michael Morales just defeated Neil Magny... I understand the leech was out for a long time, and that's why he wasn't ranked at that, at, you know, at this point. But how in the world is Carlos Prides not ranked? Thank you for not ranking him. He is absolutely my dark horse for the welterweight division. Sorry, Michael Morales. I understand he's a lot younger. I get it. I get it. No harm. No shame. A lot of people at the at, when this video comes out is gonna put that that's their dark horse for a welterweight division. I understand it. I really do. No criticism. It just Pradis is a monster, and I love it. Next, for the uh, light heavy or for sorry for the middleweight division, 
Jesus. For the middleweight division, you all know what it is. Michelle Pereira. Now, I understand this is the first guy that I picked inside the top 15, number 14. I just don't hear anybody talking about him. On an eight-fight winning streak, he was 23-11. and 11. I believe his last loss was Diego Sanchez. Yes, it was. Two losses in a row. Tristan Connolly, who's no longer in the UFC, like a developer or some shit. And then uh, he lost to a legal knee by Diego Sanchez. Again. 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 I understand. He's ranked now. He's has, he has a big fight against Fluffy. No one's talking about him. Like us MMA uh, enthusiasts are talking about him. He's 9-2 in the UFC. He's 31-11. and 11. That's correct, right? Did I just... Yeah, he is. 31-11-1. And, and he's been finished one time or twice in his career, but once by TKO or KO. And it's Deska Todorovic. That is... That is still blows my mind. Blows my mind. 18 finishes for Michelle Pereira. You know, 14 fin first-round finishes. This guy is an absolute monster. He's shown us that he can go to a decision. He's shown he can find a big finish. He's shown he gets some submissions. Here he has a Rune choke against Michael Olin Chechek. He has a standing guillotine against Eero Pateria, who's not very good. Agreed. And he destroyed Andre Petrowski, who's at least somewhat good, at least wrestling-wise. Beat Santiago Ponzinibbio. Maybe there's an argument that Ponzinibbio won. Sure. Uh, went to three-round decision with Filio. I understand. Three-round decision with Nico Price, where Nico actually was in, on top in the third round. Very weird. Went to war with Chaos Williams. War. And then, uh, yeah. But it, anyways, I, the, the reason why he's my dark horse, I understand he's ranked 14. I get it. I get it. He's only 31, 30 years old. He'll be 31 in October. Michael Pereira, Michelle Pereira is absolutely the dark horse. No one talks about him. No one's talking about him. Eight fight winning streak, and I believe out of those eight fights, let me see, one, two, three, four out of the eight are finishes. Four, and no one's talking about him. Nobody. Unless you're an actual MMA fan, sure. But I don't ever hear about him, oh, he can make a run, he needs a top, top tier fight. I mean, again, I know he's fighting Fluffy, but where's Fluffy ranked? Where's Fluffy ranked? 13? You give him the number 13 guy on this big of a win streak? I don't understand it. I like Fluffy a lot. Come on. I always feel like he's fighting down a little bit. I don't understand the matchmaking on this one. I, I really don't. I really don't. But that is absolutely my dark horse um, for the middleweight division. I mean, this guy's so well rounded, and he's he's slowed down the antics. What that made him tired in the Tristan Connolly fight. If you watch that fight, he was doing work, literally until he got tired. Doing work. He's more calm now. I believe it was also in a different division. Obviously, it was. I think it was the uh, uh, welterweight division, and now he's up a weight class where he's done m work. So again, if you took a shot every time I said work, you'd be freaking an alcoholic right about now. But yeah. Anyways. Michelle Pereira, my middleweight dark horse. Next is a guy that just lost. I know he's still my dark horse. That's Vitor Petrino. He just is 11 and 1, 27 years old. One, like I said, just lost in May against Anthony Smith. He's number 20 light heavyweight fighter. Again, this is another one where the potential for this guy is top five to top ten uh, to low uh, uh, right to ten. Again, if he puts everything together, he could be at least challenging for a title. I'm not kidding. He's good on the ground. He has decent striking. He has big power. He's explosive. The one thing is, is at 27, he needs the experience. He might take a loss or two more losses. But at some point, I really think this guy can really, really put it together. And I think him fighting Dustin Jacoby, that is his next fight. I'm correct. Yeah, Dustin Jacoby in losing to Anthony Smith basically by himself shooting like he did a naked takedown and keeping his head where Anthony Smith, the veteran can wrap up guillotine and everyone's saying guillotine, guillotine, guillotine and gets submitted by guillotine. I, I really think Petrino could be something special again, world champion, maybe not title, uh, uh, uh eliminating eliminator match. Sure. Sure. He's, he's ranked 20 right now. I mean, Dustin Jacoby is uh, da, 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 21. 
You know, Victor Petrino destroys Dominic Reyes, beats Ryan Spann, beats Alonzo Manafield. Bogdan could be a, a, a tough one, but his ground game, we don't know. The last time he fought somebody who's decent on the ground, at least well-rounded somewhat, is Ozdemir, and Ozdemir destroyed him. Short notice, I agree, fine. Um, I, I'd love to see the Anthony Smith rematch. They probably won't do that after Dominic Reyes beats him. Uh, Coles Oberg is going to be the hardest fight. He destroys Johnny. Um, close fight with Azmat. Nikita would give him a hard time because of his length. Ozdemir, I think Petrino beats. And then you got the top. He destroys Rakic because Rakic is shit. Beats Jan Blakovic because Jan Blakovic is old as hell and he's, he's boring. But uh, yeah, again... Inkalaev, I think you could do work against because Inkalaev is slow, doesn't do anything. People, how, let me ask you, let me ask you this, guys. I'm going to go on a little bit of a tangent. I know, I know we're a little bit into this video at 20 minutes. I'm going to show you something. What the actual fuck is this? Rankings for middleweight, for light heavyweight, I'm sorry. Why is Magomed Inkalaev above Alex Pereira? Pereira is the champion. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? You can dislike that Alex Pereira hasn't fought Magomed Ankalaev. Fine. Also, fuck Ankalaev. Who has he beaten? Nobody. He had to wrestle Jan Blakovich after Jan was destroying his legs, and he's supposed to be a striker. Ankalaev is. Do you know what Pereira would do to Ankalaev? Anything and everything he wanted to. Ankalaev couldn't even handle Jan's leg kicks. Imagine what Alex Pereira's leg kicks would do to him. Come on. Ankalaev is above Pereira in these rankings? What are we talking about? Honestly, what are we talking about? That's a joke. That's an actual joke. That's disgusting. I'll show you another fucking thing that's a joke too. I'll show you. Don't you don't you guys worry. Uh but yeah, anyways. Uh uh da, 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 da. yeah, light heavyweight. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah. Uh Victor Petrino is absolutely the dark horse for me personally. That's my light heavyweight dark horse in that division. So Victor Petrino, sorry for the rambling. Gotta get a thing out there though. And this is gonna this is gonna confuse a lot of people. I just think with the style of the fighting that he has, he needs to fix his cardio. Uh, but I just think he can do a lot in that division because of his style if he can fix his cardio. I'm taking a bit of a reach, taking a bit of a gamble. I'm gonna give you a second to think about who who you think I am saying the dark horse is. All right, there's your couple seconds. Shamil Gaziev. I know he's 13-1. I know he just lost against Jorginho. I think nine times out of ten, Shamil beats Jorginho. I'm sorry. He lost that fight because his cardio just completely failed him. 11 finishes. Uh, eight first-round finishes. Again, again, he should have done more against Dante Mays, but he absolutely mauled him. Could he have finished him? Sure. But he showed uh, a better cardio in those three rounds. Not perfect. Not perfect at all, but he's number 19 heavyweight fighter right now. Again, I just think if he can fix his cardio or at least figure out how to manage his uh, his gas tank a little bit better, he can do a lot of good things. I think that's the reality. Also, who made these light this, these heavyweight uh, rankings? Please, who? John Jones is the fucking world champion. He's Five. Oh my God. Oh my God. Also, why is Cyril gone above John Jones? Why? Why is he above John Jones? John Jones got fucking injured. That's why he hasn't fought. Otherwise, he would have already fought Stipe Miocic. He'd be on his way to fighting Tom Aspinall. Why is Cyril gone above John when Job said, John said, here, lick my cup, I'm your daddy? Oh my God. What is that? Tom Aspinall, how are you number one? You are not the champion. That is John Jones. Tom, you have fought nobody. You've fought nobody. 
I don't care that you beat Curtis Blades. I don't care that you beat Sergei Pavlich. Volkov. Alexander Volkov has a better resume than you. Alexander Volkov has a better resume. Congratulations. You took him down and you submitted him. The, Volkano the, the Volkov, not Volkanovsky, the Volkov we have right now is, the, is a better Volkov than when you fought him. You've, you have not fought Cyril Gunn. You have not fought Jolton Almeida. You have not fought Volkov. Oh, you did fight Volkov. Sorry. You haven't fought uh, Cyril Gunn, Jolton Almeida, uh, da, 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 Derek Lewis, uh, Jarzinho, Taito Avasa, Marcus de Lima, Romanov, Nascimento. Or you, I think you did beat Nascimento, actually. No, you didn't. You didn't fight Nascimento. What? What? You haven't fought anybody. Cool, you beat Curtis Blades. Cool, you beat Sergei Pavlich, who's not good. Spivak, you beat when he was younger. Tybora, yeah, you beat 2023. Tabora, you beat him in the first round. That's exactly, yeah, shocker there. Uh, who? What? What are we talking about? What are we talking about? Why is John Jones number five? He's the champion. Guys, get your head out of Aspinall's ass. Aspinall hasn't fought anybody. He's on a three-fight winning streak against who? Tybora? Pavlich? Curtis Blades? Do you know what John would do to all of those guys? Maul every single one of them. Every one of them. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? I'm so confused. It's... It's mind-boggling. But again, Shamil Gaziev, absolutely my dark horse. Again, Pete, this is going to piss some people off. Bring it on, bitches. Again, put your uh, comments down below. Let me know who your guys' dark horses are in each division. I'm going to read all the comments. As you guys know, I will get back to you for sure. You're going to be a little bitch about it. We can go back and forth. Feeling a little feisty? Feeling a little feisty? But again... Thank you guys so much for the support. You guys are absolutely unbelievable. For all you uh, uh, members that I have out there, no chill, uh, uh, ball juice of Zeus, that uh, colostrum, you know who you are. Um, oh, shoot. I think. Okay. Well, let's, 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 let's give the, uh... hold on. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, Ball Juice of Zeus, Mike L, thank you. Larry CTM, thank you very much. River Rat, Ventrius, Bitsy, Northwest, and No Chill MMA. If you guys aren't subscribed to No Chill, make sure you go subscribe. And again, thank you guys so much for your contribution. You guys are absolutely incredible. If you want to become a member and get these videos a little bit earlier, please make sure you do so. And as always, subscribe, like, comment. I'll see you guys at the next one. Ooh, just gonna piss some people off. Bring it on.